I'm Timothy Armstrong, and I'm a web developer and a student at the University of Waterloo. Last night, I wrote the midterm for my concurrent and parallel programming class, and I figured it would be good to put together a quick screencast on adding concurrency to JavaScript programs. Let me show you what we'll be working with. I put together a very simple web application which applies a basic filter to an image. You can drag in an image, set the number of iterations for the filter, and then press the button. And as you can see, the image has now had the filter applied. And I can press the button a couple more times to filter even further. But we have a problem. Filtering can take a while to perform, especially if we crank up the number of iterations. While it's less evident in this small application, the user interface locks up while the image filter is being applied. So let's use maybe 500 iterations. And you can see the button is stuck and I can't do anything with the rest of the page. The problem is that while the JavaScript is running, the interface will inevitably be frozen. This is just the nature of JavaScript. Since the code runs in the same thread as the UI, they can't run at the same time. Now, if you're a long-time JavaScript developer, you've probably seen this problem before. And you might be thinking of the old school solution of throttling the filter function using timeouts. That's not really a great solution though. Modern browsers let us run JavaScript in parallel with the UI thread using what are called web workers. So what I'm going to show is the process of restructuring this application to use web workers to fix the problem that we're seeing. So let's jump over to the code. What we have is pretty straightforward. The HTML consists of just the canvas and the input and button that we're using. And in the JavaScript, I have our filtering function here, which takes the image data, um, which it uses to modify, and the number of iterations to perform. I then have some setup code uh, to handle the dragging and the dropping of images into the application. And then down here, I have what we'll be working with. This is the handler for the button. So you can see we grab the image data and the number of iterations, and then we pass that to the filtering function to modify, and then after that runs, we draw the updated image back to the canvas. The filtering function is what's taking a long time, so this is what we want to be running in parallel. Let's start by making a place for our web worker code, and I'll do that up here at the top. We'll create a script tag and give it an ID of worker. And for the type, we're using JavaScript slash worker. This is just a convention, but it needs to be different from the default text slash JavaScript because we don't want the JavaScript engine to run this code until after we've created our web worker. I'll also move our filtering function into this web worker because this is where we'll need it later. So get it from there and pop it in here. Now I'll start creating our web worker object. Go into our handler. The way that you create the web worker object is using the, uh, the built-in worker constructor. So we'll say var worker equals new worker. And what it requires is you to pass in the URL of the web worker script into the constructor. In this case, though, we don't have a URL since we just put the code above in this file. So what we can do instead is make use of another cool thing in HTML5, which are called blobs. I won't talk about them too much here, but basically a blob is a representation of some data, and we can actually have the browser generate a URL for us from this blob. So I'll go ahead and create this blob. New blob. And what we pass in is uh, the, uh, the data from, the, from above. So we call that worker, and we'll take the uh, text contents of that. Cool. And now we will create a worker, or sorry, create a uh, URL for the blob and pass that into the worker. Cool. 
create a new object URL from the blob. Cool. Now, web workers are unable to access the DOM in order to work together with regular JavaScript. They need to pass messages to each other. The filtering function needs uh, the, the image data and the number of iterations, but that's stored in the DOM, in the canvas and in the input box. So we'll send this to the message instead. We send messages to the worker by calling the post message function. So I'll put that in here. Worker.post message. And we can pass in an object with the data that we want to send. So in this case, we want image data, which will be our image data that we grabbed above, and iterations, which we also grabbed above. Now we need to handle this message inside the worker, so I'll create it as handler. So back up here in the worker. Inside of a worker, the global object is called self. So I'll add the on message handler to that. And we need the event here. And then we can call the filter function. And into it, we can pass both the image data and the iterations. In this case, these are held in the data object on the event. So e.data.image data and e.data.iterations. Cool. Now we need to send the result back to the main JavaScript thread. And again, we do this using post message. This time, we only need to pass in the image data. So we'll call self.postMessage, again passing in the object, image data, which is our e.data.image data that we just modified. Looks like we forgot some semicolons. And back in the main thread, let's add a handler for the messages from the worker. This is just like what we did in, in the worker just a second ago. So before we call post message, we'll set up its handler. And just like before, we'll put our image data back into the canvas. And we can delete this old code that we had. Cool. So let's save that and take a look at what we've built. Refresh the page. We'll drag in our image and press filter. And you'll notice that this time the button didn't lock up. And even if we use a lot of iterations, maybe even 5,000, it comes back right away. Therefore, the freezing is not happening, and our filter is still happening successfully. So I hope this gives you a brief introduction to making parts of your JavaScript application run in parallel. Thanks for watching.